our dear Heavenly Father, this wonderful evening, we are delighted to be in your presence, to worship you, to adore you, to praise you, and even to honor you. We thank you, King of Glory Father, as teachers, as parents, and even the entire Sukari community for giving us this opportunity to learn. We don't take it for granted, King of Glory Father, even as we thank you because of Sukari Parish and even the leadership of the Church King of Glory for offering us this opportunity. Dear Lord, I pray that you may bless them, King of Glory Father, and continue, King of Glory Father, helping them, dear Redeemer Savior, so that they can continue uh, offering more and more opportunities for us as teachers and even the parents to learn, King of Glory, so that, dear Redeemer Savior, we are able to bring up good citizens. We want also to thank you because of our facilitator, Madam Miriam, as she continues to enlighten us, King of Glory, I pray that God, may you guide her in whatever she is going to, uh, to, to, to tell us today, King of Glory, so that dear Redeemer Savior, it shall help us, dear Redeemer Savior, to nurture the different talents that you have given to our children. We surrender her before you, God. We surrender this session before you, God. Let your Holy Spirit take over control. Thank you because we know you are good God, my Father. Our prayer is that God, each and everyone to be on board so that dear Lord, as we continue nurturing our children, no one shall be left behind. I pray that, dear Lord, after this, after this session, we are going to bring up our good citizens, King of Glory Father, empowered, engaged, and even ethical citizens, dear Lord. This is our prayer that, God, you may walk hard in hand together with us. We praise you and worship you. This we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, thank you, Marim. Uh, our dear parents, we are aware that we are shifting from 844 uh, to 2663, meaning two years in pre-primary, six years in uh, grade one to grade six, six years in secondary, that is three years junior secondary, and three years uh, senior secondary, and finally, three years um, higher education. That is two, six, six, three. And uh, in this system, we have CBC. And uh, as we have been told, CBC is focused in bringing up a child who is engaged, empowered, and ethical. It is also focused on nurturing every runner's potential. And to do so, we need to involve all our stakeholders, including our parents. And this evening, I'm delighted and I'm very happy uh, to say that uh, we have our guest, that is Madam Miriam Bogwa, uh, who shall carry us through the topic, laws of uh, the parent in CBC. Uh, so that we can understand our laws as talent uh, in this academic journey. I am here by uh, requesting Madam Miriam to take over and carry us through. Madam Miriam? Madam Miriam? Thank you. Welcome. <clears throat> Welcome. Um, and before she, oh, Madam Miriam, I didn't say who is Madam Miriam. Madam Miriam is a practicing teacher, and uh, she is an expert in uh, CBC implementation. So I'm sure she will carry us through uh, the topic very nicely. Welcome, Madam. Thank you. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Miriam, as I have been introduced. I'm a, a practicing teacher and, however, an expert in curriculum implementation and matters of assessment. 
And I hope that by the end of this presentation, every parent here will have understood more about the new curriculum and therefore understand what their role is and what the teacher's role is and the child's role in partaking the cake of CBC. So welcome, I will share the screen and then I will take you through. The new curriculum began in 19, the old curriculum that is 844 began in the year 1985. And uh, the system of education was 844 system. And now the country has shifted to the system 2663. And the role of the teacher and the parent is very critical. And therefore Kenya has adopted the competence-based curriculum with six to produce globally competitive citizens the curriculum emphasizes more on practical skills and learning. And that tells you the reason the teachers are giving a lot of activities unlike the normal homework we were used to in 844. Now the competence-based curriculum refers to an education program that is based on learners demonstrating the ability to acquire and apply knowledge, skills and values as they progress through the different levels of education. Now, what is the vision of the new curriculum? The vision is to develop an engaged, empowered, and ethical citizen. Therefore, we need power, uh, uh, citizens at the end of the curriculum 2663. We need learners who are quite engaged. Maybe they are working, empowered. They have the knowledge, the skills, and ethical citizens who respect other people. And I would like to say at this juncture that the new curriculum is, uh, is in line with the national goals of education. And one of the national goals of education is uh, to foster nationalism. Therefore, you respect other people's culture and values. Now, the mission is to nurture every learner's potential. I believe every learner is unique. They are gifted in different ways. And therefore, as parents, if we are able to tap the learner's potential at a very young age, then we are able to develop them and nurture their potential. Now, I want to take you to the framework. So this is the basic education framework. There. Yeah. So the learners are starting in PP1 at four years old, PP2 when they are two years old. And as you can see throughout this classroom assessment, the CA here means classroom assessment. You can see my CASA. And then after that, they head to grade one. So the question is, we have play group. Where does play group come in? Now, initially at the beginning, it was the role of the parents to equip the learners with the fine motor and gross motor skills, or I would say school readiness. However, most of the parents in Kenya are working and therefore the, uh, the coming up of the play group. And as you, you can hear the name play group, the learners are supposed to run through play. Then they proceed after PP1, PP2, they proceed to grade one at six years old, grade yes, two and, yes, grade yes. Three. and in grade three, they sit for the first national assessment. I would wish to give a very good example of the formative assessment that was done last year, but one, when learners went to the market to clean. Now, that is the first tire of three years. Then we go to the next tire of three years, that is grade four, five, and six. Now, you realize that from grade four, the learners are sitting for national assessment through the council, the Kenya National As Examination Council. That is in grade four, five in, and six. However, in grade six, the assessment will be tabled or will be supervised by the council. Therefore, that is the second tier of three years. So if I go to PP1, those are two years, PP1 and PP2, two years, grade one, two, three, three years, grade four, five, and six, three years, we add together three plus three, that is six years, and that is the end of primary education. 
Then they head to junior high school, that is grade seven. At that point, the child will be 12 years. Again, there will be classroom assessment by the teacher here, and as well as the council, grade eight and grade nine. Again, they sit for a national assessment, which will be supervised by the council. Now, parents, it is in junior high school whereby you need to really know which pathway your child is ready for as they head to senior high school. So as they head to senior high school, that is grade 10, 11, and 12, they will take different pathways. The pathways are three, STEM, social sciences, arts, and sports and sciences. So when we look at STEM, STEM is sciences, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So learners who are very good in sciences, technology, engineering, and mathematics will join such a school. Now, when we are talking about STEM, we don't mean that the school will offer all the levels of STEM. A school could offer sciences and technology or offer mathematics and engineering. It depends with the speciality of the school. And therefore, parents, you will play a very critical role to be able to realize where your child fits in best. Again, we have arts and sports. In sports and arts, we have performing arts. That is where we have got music. Then we have got the other sports, ball games. We have um, indoor games, athletics, martial arts. So it is at this point that the parent will be able to, together with the child, not only the parent, together with the child, they will be able to decide which pathway the child will take. Now, in sports and, uh, and arts, we will have, um, I said, ball games, athletics, indoor games, gymnastics, swimming, boxing, martial arts, and advanced physical education. Then we have performing arts, still under sports and sciences. We have music, dance, and theater. Then when we go to visual arts, that is still under arts and sports, we'll have fine arts, applied arts and crafts. Yeah, for parents, it is very important at this point to, to work very closely with your child and realize where they are good and where they are best placed. Now, when we, when we go to social sciences, more of the languages and we will also have children Kindly let us mute those who are there. Let us mute so that we can be together. Thank you. Then again, under social sciences, we will have humanities and business studies. That is a lot of history, citizenship, geography, religious education, that is CRE, HRE, IRE, and then we will also have business studies. Then when we come to STEM, we will have fewer sciences, that is mathematics, biology, chemistry, and physics. Then we will have applied sciences still under STEM, that is agriculture, computer studies, food and nutrition, and home management. Then under technical and in engineering, we will have agriculture, geoscience, marine and fisheries, electrical, metal, power mechanics, construction, media, electronics, and manufacturing. Then under career and technology, which is still under STEM, we will have um, metal work, land survey, technology, science laboratory, photography, therapy, plumbing, ceram uh, ceramics, firefighting, tourism and travel, fashion and interior design. There are so many courses under that. Therefore, it is the role of the parents to keep checking and to work together with the child to realize where best they fit. So I want to go back to the tire 2663. We have the first tire here, two years in preschool, then the six years in primary, grade one to six, then the six years in junior and six senior high school, three plus three is six, and then the child can either start working or uh, go for tertiary education and training. That will be the last tire, three years. And therefore, the new curriculum emphasizes on uh, competences, values, attitude, skills, and knowledge. 
And uh, I want to emphasize that uh, parents, we have worked very closely with the teachers to make sure that our children have got the communication and the collaboration skills. They, they are able to work with others, critical thinking and problem solving. Then creativity and imagination, I want to talk about that. When teachers give projects, parents, please let us find out from the children what they had planned to do in the project. Therefore, allow, allow ourselves to work with the child in their imagination. And then now whatever they had created in their mind, assuming they had been asked to make maybe a hat, the child will tell you the materials that they had planned to use to make that particular hat. So we allow them to be very critical in a critical, to be very critical in their thinking, to be creative. And therefore, at the end of the day, they will have solved a problem. And therefore, parents, it is important at this point that we keep communicating with the children and the teachers. I'm sure our official communication tool is the diary and then work together with the school and the teachers and the learners to be able to achieve this. We need better citizens in our country. We need to teach our children how to respect other people's culture, respect other people the way they are, no matter what walk of life they have, and to be patriotic and to respect our country. Then the other one is digital literacy. When we come to digital literacy, we need to expose our children to learn as much as possible from uh, whatever digital devices we have. There are many, we have phones, we have tablets, we have computers, we have laptops. However, parents, we need to monitor what the children are doing with these devices. The children can learn. If you, if you go even to YouTube, you'll be able to see composition writing, insha writing, parts of speech, nomino, everything is there. However, we need to monitor what the children are doing with these devices. And at the end of the of it all, the children will be able to express them, themselves in a better way and therefore have high self-esteem and therefore self-efficacy will be developed. Let us allow the children to learn in different situations. Let us go for walks with the children. Let us expose them to arenas where they can learn as much as possible. Now, once the children are involved to digital devices or once they are uh, exposed to digital literacy, the children are able to use and apply technology in learning. If you look at the children, the, the current generation of children we have, their spoken language is very good because they are very keen when they are watching and listening to a language. And therefore, the first skills in we develop when uh, the first skill that we develop when we want to learn a language is through listening, and they are very keen. If you look at them watching the TV, they are very keen. And therefore they pick the language very fast and therefore they become very innovative, very creative. They have communication skills, they are problem solvers and they are very analytical. So it is important parents to expose our children to digital devices. However, we need to monitor them. Now, which are the values that we want to achieve as children want to go through CBC? And this can only be achieved by the teacher the parent and the child, if we work together. Again, I go back to communication and collaboration. So we need the children to be responsible. Parents, we are teaching children how to take care of their personal items. Please let us mark all their items to make it easy for them to recognize them when they lose them. Let us also allow the children, let us teach our children to respect other people, to respect other people's property, then care and compassion, to be very understanding, tolerant in many situations, to be honest and trustworthy. So these are some of the values we hope to achieve as the children go on with the curriculum. Now, we have the competence-based assessment, which is a process of determining the capability of a learner to apply related knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes. Therefore, under the competence-based curriculum, uh, we are hoping that the learners will be able to apply what they have acquired and what they have learned. And therefore, it is the role of the teacher to keep monitoring the learners and assess the learners. And the teachers have assessment books, which is a tool for promotion and uh, advancement into the next level. Let us keep checking this. And then as the learners do the tasks, let us check where they are best placed, what they are gifted in.
Now, the council, that is the Kenya National Examination Council, has uh, developed a competence-based assess assessment framework which outlines ways of assessing learners acquisition of the targeted competences, values, skills, and therefore the teachers have an assessment book, which is a tool that should be with the teacher and the parent should keep checking what is going on. Now, this will create opportunities for learners and teachers to use assessment for improving learning, not to label learners, to improve learning rather than simply labeling learners in terms of their final achievement. I'm comparing this with 844. If you get 200 marks, you are deemed you're a failure. If you get a D plus, you're a failure. However, we are saying in CBC, assessment gives the learner an opportunity to improve on the acquired skills. Now, which types of assessments are the teachers using? They are using formative assessment, and parents, I want to talk about, from, I want to put a lot of emphasis on the formative assessment because that is where we are needed. When teachers are giving the learners a project to do at home, please let us come in and work. Now, assuming the child had been asked to make the heart, the heart we were talking about, who should do the work? Is it the parent? Is it the teacher? Is it the child? Or is it the house girl? Or is it a, a paid laborer? I would wish to say that when the children are given projects, first of all, discuss with the child. Then there are two ways. You can do it as the child is looking or decide to work together with the child. Remember, these assessments, the projects that the children are being given are being assessed by the teacher and they are being recorded in the summative, in the assessment book. Then we have the assessment, the summative assessment that comes at the end. It assesses what the learners have, have been taught. A good example is the KCP and KCSE. But in this case, we are talking about uh, the summative assessments such as end-term exams and mid-term exams and any other assessments that will come at the end. Now, the Council, the Kenya National Examination Council has adopted the portfolio as an option for assessing the learners' progress in an extended period of time. I want to break down a portfolio and say a portfolio is just an album, work that has been put together over a period of time. An album has photos over a period of time. Therefore, the role of the parent is very important in helping the learner to build and collect work. The portfolio should provide a long-term record of growth in learning and skills for individual reflection and self-assessment. Remember, this is the tool that will also help us to know where the children are better placed in terms of skills. Now that's an example of a portfolio. Let us look at the content. That is content that a child has come up with, I believe with the help of the parent. You can see the fruits, the leaves and the flowers. These are materials for cleaning utensils. This is work that has been done by the learner and the parent at home and then it has been brought to class which is very good work that is external medicine the children have collected the empty packets of medicine that is external medicine we are even teaching them how to take the medicine then we have internal medicine yeah where we are teaching them how to take the med uh, the Medicine, if it is one times three, what does it mean? Children as early as grade three are able to interpret the inst instructions on the medicine. Now, the curriculum is value-based and therefore parents and teachers and all adults are expected to be role models for the learners to uphold good values. Remember parents, it's about monkey see, monkey do, and therefore we can only be good role models. Having said all that, what is the role of the parent in the new curriculum? Number one, the parent has the role of identifying the child's potential. Be very keen using the portfolio as the child is doing assessments, as the child is doing some work at home, some homework, some takeaway, check where their best place and where their strength is. Now work with the teachers to nurture the child's potential. Assuming the child is very good in music, come and talk to the teachers, then you will be able to look for a way to empower the child either in the school or outside the school because 
Having worked with the Kahawa Sukari, I have trained all the teachers and I'm continuing with the training. Uh, we, we hope to be able to open some academies within our school and therefore we will not even go very far. Then be part of the school resource mobilization. Anytime we are called upon parents, let us be role models. Then participate in school activities. And like now we have Corona, but initially, even this is a school activity, it's a meeting. I'm sure the children whose parents have attended are very happy because I'm sure the teachers will ask whose parents came for the meeting. And those that their parents part participated in the meeting will feel honored and happy. The net has provide all basic needs for the children. Remember, we are teaching the children their rights as early as grade one, so they know they have a right to education, a right to health, um, a right to basic needs like uh, clothes, uh, shelter, education, and therefore parents. Sometimes times are hard and uh, children are not able, and we are not able to pay school fees on time. It is only important that we tell, we come to the office and, and speak our case in advance. Then uh, have a clear understanding of the pertinent and contemporary issues. Now, which are these pertinent and contemporary issues? For example, we have got a health education. We should be able to talk to our children about even COVID-19 and what is happening. Uh, the importance of washing their hands, the importance of wearing their masks, so that we are speaking the same language. Let us talk to them about child care, taking care of themselves and protecting themselves, um, and also about strangers, because that is what the teachers are training them in class. So these are some of the issues that we need to train them about, even cancer. Let us talk to the children about what is the pertinent and contemporary issues. The other pertinent and contemporary issues we have are to develop citizen issues. We have already talked about it. And then also life skills, for example, communication skills, coping with the situations, different situations. Let us talk to the children about any emerging issues. Then let us appreciate the learners' achievements. Let us motivate them, but let us only promise what we can achieve and what we can be able to give them. Please don't uh, promise your child a Lamborghini and you know very well, you may not even come close to affording that. Then guide the learners to set realistic life goals Then engage and empower the nannies and any other person who is in the house with the child with the relevant child upbringing skills let them know when the child is given an, a, a project or an assignment, they should not do the project or assignment for the child. Let us also be keen on child developmental stages so that we can have intervention. Some of these problems that children have, like reading skills or even mathematical skills, if identified early, they can be sorted out as early as possible. Then let us check the learner's assessment books and portfolios so that we can know what the children are going through. And let us also communicate and listen to the children. However, let us also, as they tell us the experiences in school, let us make uh, decisions that uh, will suit both the child and the school environment. Thank you very much. Uh, I would wish to take some questions. Hi, Miriam. Good evening. Hi. I'd like to say I missed the first 10 minutes because I was trying to connect. I don't know whether uh, other than, you know, the uh, basic requirements as parents to support the kids and to learn with them in, in a sense. Is there anything that, uh, in your opinion, I would have missed in the first 10 minutes? Maybe the framework. Would you recap kindly? The framework. Yes, please. Okay, thank you. So we said the children are starting formal learning in PP1, PP2. However, the play groups is there to enhance the fine motor and the cross motor okay. skills so that children are able to in, speak in, in class, be able to hold the crayon, the pencil, communication skills. Then once okay, they okay, come okay, to okay. PP1, please let us mute. 
So when the children turn to be one and fifty two, the child is four years, then five years, that is the first prior to then we come to grade one, two, three, that is the second prior, the child should be six years, and then by grade three, we sit for the first national assessment. And I gave a very good example last year, but one when the children swept the market. Then grade four, five, and six, that is the three plus three primary education. So that is six years. And remember, in grade four, five, and six, they will sit for national assessment through the council. However, in grade six, the council will supervise the assessment. Remember, the assessment is both summative and formative. We said the summative is a written test. Now then they will join junior high school, grade seven, eight, and nine. And therefore, at this time, parents will need to think about the pathway. And we said the pathway they will have and the pathways are STEM, sciences, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Then we have social sciences where we have got a lot of languages. Literature, Fasini, indigenous languages, parents. It is important we teach our children. We don't teach them. We allow, we expose them to our indigenous languages. A child will learn a language if you talk to them. If you don't talk to them, they can't learn the language. Then the last part will be art, sports, and sciences. That is both performing arts and uh, applied arts. And then have sports, indoor games, outdoor games, martial arts. There are very many. And therefore, that is the second prior between grade seven, junior high, and grade 12, senior high school. That is the other prior of six years. And after that, they join college or university or tertiary training. And that is the other three years. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. You're welcome. I am I'm responding to a question from James Kimodo. He is asking, will we be transitioning from grade six to seven within the same school, or will it be the same way they were transitioning currently from primary to secondary school? Yes, it is possible. Uh, the government is inspecting private schools and the church-based organizations or faith-based organizations to see whether they qualify for junior high school and senior high school. So it is possible. Then uh, in play group, is it just playing? I said no. But as the way the word the, the, the word is very clear, play group. The children learn through play. Parents, play is very important for children. If a child does not play, let me assure you they cannot learn. So they need to play to be able to learn. However, as they play, what is the objective? To strengthen their fine motor skills and their gross motor, and also to develop communication skill as they play with other children, which is very important. This is a very, very important stage and children should not keep it. Now, um, we I have trained all the teachers and the, the training is going on. And we are we agreed with the teachers, they will not be ambushing the parents with the projects, but the children will be given enough time, maybe like over the weekend, to be able to do a certain project. Now about the assignments, I think moderation uh, can be done by the teachers. However, let us check if our children are able to finish the classwork from school because sometimes they are overwhelmed. Now, play group, the right age depends with you as a parent. Three years is okay, or four years. I'm answering to Susan Waidanje. Uh, three years is okay, or four years, between three and four years. Now, um, what exactly I'm, I'm responding to Mala Koteri. What exactly will be used to transition from primary to secondary? I'm not too, I'm very sure what is. But there will be both formative and summative assessments and children, depending on the pathway the child wants to take, that is what will, will make, will um, break the ground. Now, who decides which pathway to take? 
is the time. Please let us observe them so that we are not ambushing children and putting them where they cannot be able to feed. Uh, I'm responding to Robert. Robert is asking, should we have portfolios at home? No, the portfolio should be in school, but when the child is given the, the, the project, then the portfolio comes home. Because there are different types of portfolios and the teachers know how to manage the portfolio. The working portfolio should transition between home and school, same to the showcase portfolio, but the assessment portfolio should be in school. Actually, the parents in grade four and five, they will be advised by the teachers what to do with the projects that the children did in grade four and five. Now I'm looking at um, Paula. Thank you very much. Paula says that was a good presentation. Thank you. Peter Mwenda says that was a good pre presentation. Thank you. Now the children will transition to the different institutions at grade six as they head to, I'm answering to Sophia, as they head to no, junior high school. And then in grade nine, as they head to senior high school. And then at grade 12, as they join colleges and universities. Now I am looking at Anne Adoyo. She is very concerned. She's saying <laughs> she is concerned with the assignments that learners are given that the parents don't know. To what extent are we allowed to consult? I, I know what uh, Anne is feeling because I'm also a parent in grade, grade three. And sometimes my child comes with uh, mathematics questions add using a number line and i'm just like wow i did number line in high school my son is answering number line in grade three <laughs> parents when children come with these books please check there are some examples that had been given prior if it is so bad please call the teacher uh, hide yourself somewhere and ask the teacher consult the teacher and then now come back with a lot of uh, boldness and now help the child but they're not very difficult. It's just that mathematics has been made more interesting. Otherwise, all the other subjects are very authentic. They are based on what the learners do on a daily basis. Again, parents, it is important we allow the children to work at home. Please let us stop. The, the children are just watching TV from morning to evening. I don't think that will add much value. However, we can control, as we said. Is it possible we allow the children to clean the utensils? They're learning how to clean the utensils. They're learning about the dots on utensils. They're learning about cleaning the house. They're learning about brushing their teeth, bathing, brushing their shoes. Is it possible we allow them to do this activity? And as we allow them to do this activity, their eye-hand coordination is greatly improved. Critical thinking and problem solving is highly improved. And of course, creativity. Um, hmm. I'm answering to James Kamodo, Kemodo, who is asking, there will be two years in pre-primary. Yes, there are two years, two official years, because playgroup is more of preparing the child with the fine motor communication skills and how to settle in class. However, parents, I can assure you, if you ask any professional teacher, Play is very important because children learn through play. It is through play that they acquire the communication skills. Now, however, as a parent, if you feel you can be able to equip yourself, your child with the skills in play group, and then you come to PP1, I don't think there's a problem. However, the only challenge I foresee is that the teacher will... Uh, the child maybe may not catch up very quickly, but if the parent feels they are well equipped, I don't think there's any danger because this was discussed and uh, 
it, it, it was well arrived at that if a parent feels they can keep the child home and equip them with the skills, the fine motor, a parent who understands the fine motor and gross motor, then it is okay. The only challenge is when the parent does not understand. Isabella, thank you very much. Now let us go to Peter Ringera. He's asking about how the assessment will be graded. I'm assuming that he's asking. Now, during the assessment, we are going to use the rubrics. Remember, at the beginning of the presentation, we said the children will no longer be the children will no longer be labeled and given numbers, but we will use levels of performance. Parents, if you see a teacher writing four on your child's paper, it does not mean they are number four. It is just a level of performance that indicates your child has exceeded the expectation that the teacher has set. Then two means the child, the, I mean, three means the child has met the expectation. And then two, the child is approaching the expectation. And one, the child is below expectation. A child who is below expectation throughout is at a danger. And it means that maybe the child is not getting enough support either at school or at home. Miles Musioka, thank you. He says, I've done a good presentation. Um, they were asking about careers, which I have done. Children who are interested with insects, I think that is under STEM sciences, that is where they would best fit in. Career sporting is yet to take root in the country. How will these children become competitive in the world? Kenya is a growing country and we, are, we have children in the 21st century. They have more opportunities. I believe if they are exposed to the opportunities and even as a country, we allow ourselves to give these children a, an opportunity, I'm sure they can go very far. Now, under summative assessment, Mama Lavin is asking, should children be ranked? No, the children should be given levels of performance. Thank you, Josephine. The standardization of the assessment. I don't think there will be any standardization because the comparison between what the teacher has been giving in class and what the child has been given in the final assessment that will be the comparison and therefore they will be able to arrive at a conclusion and place the child. However, remember we said the portfolio shows improvement. So if the child started maybe at below expectation, but by the end of the learning process, the child is at exceeding expectation, then there is no problem if the child has exceeded. Thank you, Vashero. Thank you, George. Thank you, Priscilla. Thank you, Robert. Yes, I agree with Robert. There is a lot of transition. However, those who went through 844 at the initial stages, um, there is much comparison. However, we are saying that uh, now we are insisting more on competences. We didn't have competences then. And uh, also the values have also changed a bit. And the children will be more equipped. If you give the children the opportunity in the house, especially to do the small jobs that they have in the house, the small duties, you will see a very big difference between the child who is doing 844 and the child who has done CBC. Now, Elizabeth Chaura is asking if the child joins at 84, do they join the group or 51? That is at the discretion of the parent. And you can as well discuss with the teacher because children at that level are at different developmental stages. So I may not be able to say that if a child is four years, then they go direct to 52 or 51. That will be in cohort with the parent, the teacher, and also the child from the assessment you have done. And also every, I'm sure every parent knows the developmental stages that the child is with. Some children have delayed milestones and therefore we may not really be able to decide. However, the standard is four years.
The project is very important. Actually, the project, the formative assessment uh, carries at the ratio of six to four. Therefore, the, the formative assessment is a very key parent. We have to take it very seriously. Thank you, James. Margaret is asking, can a child joining PP1 without passing through playgroup? It depends. Again, I want to say, all this depends on the parent, the teacher, and the child. And if you understand your child very well, if you understand the, the child, if the child is the, the, has no problems with developmental stages, has acquired the fine motor and the gross motor, why not? I don't see any problem. However, you have to discuss this with the expert who is the teacher. I'm seeing a concerned parent, Edward Njibuna is asking, apart from remedio, how else can we help children maybe slow progressing? I'm sure if you also talk to the teachers, uh, they will advise you other modules, but I would say uh, the time remedio works. And uh, now because we have digital literacy, expose them to learning on the, on the digital devices. There is a lot of learning, a lot of learning, and also motivating the child and, uh, of course, uh, motivating them when they achieve, even if they make baby steps, let us uh, applaud the children. I'm going to Samuel Gidenji. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Miriam. And actually, post and the question on the wall, mm -hmm. on the chat, uh, but mm -hmm. I can I can still articulate it. Uh, my concern is uh, how the CBC is uh, connecting with other global programs. For instance, mm -hmm. if uh, if right now you want to do a postgraduate uh, a program in US, one of the requirements is that you need to have done mm -hmm. a, four, a four year degree equivalence. But now when you look at the CBC, mm -hmm. we are talking of three years. So how will these students connect to, to other global uh, programs? Okay. I don't have a lot of information on that, but I can only tell you uh, from where I see it. The competence-based curriculum is adopted from the competence-based education systems, which have been adopted in the other countries and have been, uh, 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 would I say they, are, they have gone through the processes and therefore, I am thinking because CBC is, a, is under the competence-based education curriculums, which is a certified curriculum, I am thinking maybe they are going to marry. Chances of marrying are very high. But I don't want to give my answer at 100%. Okay. Is, is there... Uh, any other place where we can be able to get this information? Because uh, we find most of uh, uh, our, our students actually move on to UK, to US, to other Asian uh, programs. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I, at the moment, we don't have that confirmation that uh, actually when you're coming from CBC, you can easily transition to a, a PhD program or a postgraduate program in US or UK without having to go through other challenges. Okay, um, let me take it as homework. I will yes. find out more. However, yes. I know CBC is brought from competence-based education. And when we did benchmarking, when mm -hmm. we traveled to other countries to benchmark, mm -hmm. um, it was quite in line. However, I will, I will find out about that issue of transition. Okay, thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Peter Gashiri is asking, in case a child is absent, what do I do? Please work with the teacher, catch up quickly with the teacher to find out what they were supposed to do. Thank you, Ruth. STEM, Baba Sharon is asking what STEM means. It is uh, sciences, it is a pathway, sciences, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Now, um, Gabriel is asking if the parent children are doing the project at home, how do we know that it is the child who has done it and not the parent? Now that is where we are talking about integrity, integrity, 
Uh, I can assure you, Gabriel, that most of the children are very honest. When they come to school, they will say, this is mommy's project, this is daddy's project. However, even as a teacher who has done psychology, you can easily tell a project that has been done by a child and a parent. We already know the levels of these children. Thank you, Lucky Mora. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Josephine Mutua. Yes, CBC is taking care of children with special needs. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Thank you, Josephine. And like 844, where children with special needs were not being addressed, mm -hmm. that was an afterthought. But right now, we have a different uh, curriculums for children with a hearing impairment, uh, sight, uh, autism, and other problems. The curriculums are already out. And I would wish to say that uh, children can be taken for assessment at CISTE, and after that, placement will be done. And in case the children, the teacher needs to be advised to the regular teacher, they will be advised on what methods or pedagogies they need to adopt to be able to help the child. Thank you, Jackie. There is no selection of a school. There is no selection. The child will fit into the pathway. Because if a child then is interested in STEM, for example, mathematics, then that is where so there will be no selection. The child will automatically fit in the pathway that they are deemed to be. However, let us wait and see what will happen, but that was the initial plan. That through the assessment, the child will fit in the pathway automatically. Objectivity in the assessment, it will be there because the teachers are going through a lot of training even as they close because of integrity matters. And again, at some point, we are comparing the classroom, classroom assessment, the assessment book, the continuous assessment by the council, and then we have got the monitored assessment by the council. Those are four assessments. I'm sure at some point they will be able to agree. Uh, Peter Ringera is asking, However, I was asking about the distribution of masks from grades four to six. Distribution is there because we are saying maybe in an assessment, a child who attains between zero and 20, then we mean that the child is below expectation. It does not mean it must be a percentage. It can be a point or a, depending on how the teacher had set the assessment. So the teachers come up with rubrics and they are supposed to explain to the learners even before they sit for the assessment. I'm reading what Peter is, uh, has written here. According to a report that came last week, the new education guidelines for primary schools are supposed to have standalone pre-primary okay. and uh, then grade one, two, six classes for grade. I'm not sure what Peter is asking, but um, I said the government is doing inspections of institutions and they will be able to give us a guideline. They are doing, uh, I think they are carrying out a SWOT analysis to be able to see where we stand as a country and we will be given the way forward. They've already done the assessment on their public institutions. So right now they are carrying out an assessment on the public and private institutions and we have already given the returns and uh, we have even audited to be able to give back to the government for free. So I'm sure we get, but um, the projection is that the junior high school can be in the primary, should be in the primary school. However, if you want a school that is a standalone for just for preschool, that's okay. For grade one, two, three, it's okay. Assessments, whether they are localized, yes, they are localized and others are being assessed by the council from grade three to grade six. Isabella is asking, do you think uh, Kenya has the structures to accommodate the skill base? Do we have a viable market for this? I would say that the, the initial 844, those who went through the initial 844, there are so many people who are able to sustain themselves. However, 
let us give the curriculum time and see the first transition, then we will be able to see the way forward. But in my own opinion, I think there is a chance if we give the country an opportunity. Thank you, Laban. Dr. Kaziri is asking about linkage into high school placement, not clear. I don't really understand what he means. But I explained on the pathways that will be purely dictated by the child's performance, their liking and what they like and uh, what, what they feel they are able to do well. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Rosalyn. Thank you, Virginia. Mother is asking whether schools will be able to specialize when they come to junior high school. Yes, the children need to be prepared, but the pathways will go into full throttle in the senior high school. However, the children need to be prepared. Children with talents will carry the day. They will carry the day. Uh, looking at the assignments my child goes through, I'm concerned about the child in the village and what the government is uh, doing to make sure that uh, children have equal opportunities. I personally went to, to collect data at NO, that is, uh, at the, and I also went to Kitui. Other people were sent to other places, and I can tell you the child in the village is better placed. Why? The child has self-drive, the child is exposed, the child is very authentic because they carry out this activity. You realize that when we, the teachers ask the children to plant a bean seed, that calls for a press conference in the table room. And that is to discuss where the bean seed will be planted. However, in the village, the child will collect a container, put soil, look for maize and plant and take to school. Remember CBC is about reusing, recycling and then improvisation and the last one is the uh, buy for example when we are teaching the children about uh, cleaning as we are using charcoal i'm sure the child at the village is a hundred percent better place to do that activity than the child in town we are teaching children how to brush their teeth using improvised materials like a chewed stick the child in the village is better placed they don't even need to call a press conference but in Nairobi, a child calls for press conference to discuss a chewed stick. So I still think uh, they may have, they may not have a hundred percent equal opportunities, but the child in the village is well placed because these are activities they do on a daily basis. Thank you, Edward. I think I have answered the question for Peter. I can see Tanu is saying that uh, I suspect all other countries are CBC, that is CBC, and they have three year degree programs. Uh, thank you for the input, Dr. Evans. Uh, yes, Dr. Evans is also responding. When there was A level university education, was three years, and there was not uh, any issue with accessing UK or US systems for further training. Thank you for the input. Thank you, Marcy. Yes, there will be smooth transition because uh, I hope there will be smooth transition. Already piloting is already taking place even as we talk. Some schools have already piloted the transition and feedback is being collected. So I'm sure the KICD and the Ministry of Education are working hard to make sure this will be very good. Faith Modoni, thank you. I have answered that question from Belinda. I'm looking at the AM. What criteria will be asked will be used to make sure schools are not parents. 
You don't need to take your child to a school where the children are being underrated, separated. Take your child to a school where by the learning outcomes are visible, where you can see the child has acquired a skill. If you want your child to play the keyboard, take your child to where you can see children playing a keyboard. So we don't need media companies to campaign for schools or make a name for them. The school will make a name for itself. Thank you. The assignments, we've already talked about that. Uh, Wafula is asking, how do I know my child is working? Please work in cohort with the teacher, work very closely with the teacher. Uh, when you get the assessment, portfolio, checking. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being in class and being my pupil this evening. Thank you very much. And I hope that we will be able to have more sessions. CDC is very interesting. There's a lot we can learn as parents and I hope to be able to continue to employ you in another session. Thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you, Madam Miriam, for the powerful presentation. I directly invite the minister for the closing prayers. Hi. Uh, sorry, the, sorry, the minister is in action together with the elders. We yeah, are in a meeting. And then you, you can lead us in a closing prayer then. Okay, let us pray. Dear Lord, we are grateful for you being with us from morning till now and also being with us during this session. We are glad that we've learned a lot. Lord, help us to continue uh, supporting our school, even as we carry on with the new uh, CBC. Lord, please, we also pray for our teachers. We ask that you may give them wisdom and guidance as they teach our children. So we pray all this, believing that we've heard our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, parents. Uh, mm -hmm. For attending these... Uh, virtual meeting. We shall continue having such so that uh, we can move SPA together in higher levels. Okay. Thank you and God bless you.